Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a 1960s Toastmaster bottle H921 1650 watt space heater. Winter's coming, and so I want to clean up and prep this one for use. It's been sitting for quite a long time, given the amount of dust and crud inside of here. And so I've blown it out with compressed air, but it's still some work that needs to be done. Uh, I find these to work a lot better than the modern ceramic heat replacements that are forced air. These just have a larger radiant area for heat. Uh, they tend to work very effectively for my needs. And so we're going to make this one safe and usable. Uh, clean and lube the fan, replace the cord, which is a little bit tired, being that it's, you know, 50 plus years old. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's go ahead and take the back off. Clean out the inside, see about servicing the plug and the fan motor, and go from there. All right, so taking the back off, what we see here is the back side of our shield, a thermostatic cutout uh, for when the heater gets a little too hot or the fan fails. This is a ballast uh, to prevent the enormous shock that would be to your electrical system on the initial turn on. And there's our floor switch down there which, uh, if the heater tips over, cuts power to the system. There's our switch box there, which is the push button. Our thermostat control is below it. So we're going to uh, clean and dust this out best we can. And then we're going to oil up the fan motor and see about replacing this cord. Now, the reason why I'm replacing this cord, even though this one still looks good and it's very supple, it doesn't pass the heat test. So when I turn the machine on low and I let it run for five minutes, I notice that there are portions of the cord that get significantly warmer than the others, which indicates that there are strands broken inside, there's loss, and it could become a potential fire hazard on high settings when that cord gets hot enough to melt. So it's a good idea to update uh, these with a three-wire cord. And so we're going to use an appliance cord that's rated for about 20 amps. And we're going to ground the case so that the machine is earth grounded when it's used, assuming your house wiring is okay. And yeah, that's that's more or less it. We're just trying to make this so that it's safe to use. And I'm going to just kind of loosely brush out the dust here. The air comes in through the bottom of the unit. It's pulled in by this fan here and then circulated back out the top. And really the only reason why the fan is there is to keep the cabinet from getting so hot that you can't, you know, move it or use it. Uh, really, the, the hero of the story is the radiant heat element in the front that radiates heat into the room. So let me get this all cleaned up, and then we'll work on oiling up the fan motor. To make it easier to get this all apart, we're going to try to take everything out as a whole. So there's two screws up top that hold the top half of the frame in, and then the bottom half is on the fan base there. Everything's just kind of suspended inside of the cabinet. So we're gonna to try to remove this and service it as a whole. So you do have to wrestle with it some, but you can, as you can see, get it out so that we can clean all this up. And then we have better access to the fan and such that we need to clean out here. This grill does come off so we can clean up inside there, make that all nice. Uh, and then we'll worry about replacing the cord. And these are all crimp connectors. And you're going to want to make sure that you crimp and not solder. Because crimping uh, doesn't have to worry about heat, whereas solder does. If you crimp, uh, it will last. If you solder, if there's an overload that causes excessive heating here, the solder will melt, your wire will pop out, and then you'll have an issue. If you want to crimp and solder, you can, but soldering is kind of useless in these high current applications. It's better just to crimp it on there. So I'm going to continue cleaning the cabinet and case and stuff like that, and then we'll get to the fan and work on cleaning the fan up. All right, so here we got the backside cleaned up. This area is all clean. Everything about the fan and the air director is clean. I cleaned out the inside of the cabinet there. So no nasty dust or anything like that. So now what we need to do is work on getting the fan motor apart and getting that cleaned and lubricated. 
and really the best way to do this is to just take it out from the bottom. Uh, this motor is very sticky. It's like really hard to turn, so we definitely want to make sure that this is operable. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the wire nuts and take the motor out, and then we'll open it up and take a look at it. Okay, so you take loose the two nuts <clears throat> and turn the motor 90 degrees so that you can clear it and get it out. Pretty simple, huh? Nice little shaded pole fan motor. And let's see if we can get this blade off here. I wonder if it's reverse threaded. Nope, standard threads. And we're just going to take this off of here. I see that they have another nut here. Man, that is really sticky. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to leave this be. And we're just going to pull the motor apart. And I'm going to mark this. Assuming I can find a pin. There we go. Make sure it's the bottom so that we don't install it and have the fan turn backwards. Because knowing my luck, that will happen. It's very difficult to get any kind of socket in there. Try some duck bills instead. That's not much better. Really tight area. All right, there's one out of two. See if I can get the other one apart without it fighting me too much. They certainly are on there tight. this out <clears throat> all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rotor out you can see that's filthy and then that should leave that bearing cap behind and we'll note that there is a thrust washer here that we need to retain so let me just clean the dust off of these parts that oil wick is dry as a bone we're definitely going to be sure to saturate that in the bearings after cleaning out all the old gunk. Decades of use, and it still kind of sort of worked. I'd love to see one of these modern-day plastic ceramic element heaters last 50-plus years. They commonly burn out after 5 to 10. Okay. Let me get some isopropanol here and we'll start cleaning things up. And I'm just going to clean whatever gunk is left on the old bearing shaft here. There wasn't much oil left on this at all. This is a very dry motor. It's lucky that we didn't get any sort of bearing scarring. <clears throat> now, I can try to release that nut. I don't think it's going to cooperate with me, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, 
There we go. All right. That way I can get the whole bearing shaft out. And we can better clean that bearing. Of course, I unload all the fuzz in there. And then we'll be sure to soak this very thoroughly in uh, non-detergent turbine oil. That's really what you want to use. I don't see a thrust washer on the front of this thing, which is weird, but yeah, that's about on par for today, dropping stuff. All right, let me go get uh, the infamous zoom spout and we'll start oiling this stuff up. So that's what we're gonna use today. Turbine oil with a little telescopic extender thing. And I'm gonna saturate this first, this oil wick here. Assuming I can hold it still. Let me get a paper towel underneath it in case I start making a mess. And like I said, I'm just saturating this. I don't want to have to open it for a while. Let it soak it up. Ooh, it sure is doing that. There we go, start to go drip, drip, drip. We know that that's saturated. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some oil on this shaft too. And we'll put that front part back together. Kind of work it a bit. And let's see here, there's the nut. that back on here and crank it down all right so there's the top bearing let's oil up the bottom bearing now, like I said we're just going to soak it over, soak the other side, and we're starting to drip, so we got plenty there, put some inside the bearing, and then put some here on the shaft, okay, we'll put our thrust washer back on here. And those uh, guys are oiled up, ready to go. Now, if I could only remember where I put my other brush, we're going to dust out the uh, stator here. Make sure there's no junk in there and then we're going to start putting it back together and take our bottom and put it there and we'll drop our screws through it like I lost a uh, star washer of some kind did I there's marks for it there but I'm not seeing where it went I see the one affixed to the blade 
That sounds about right for this week. Let me get another Star Walker. Take a look. All right. We got another star washer. The reason why those are there is because heat and cold will work those screws loose, and you don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. We'll tighten it down, see the bearings. Attach the blade after we clean the blade up because the blade's still filthy. And of course, there's always one that wants to fight you. Okie dokie. Crank these guys down. Okie dokie, that's nice and firm. And I'm going to grab the shaft and rotate it around to seat the bearings. Now we got a nice free spinning motor. Let's go ahead and clean the blades up some. I'm going to take that paper towel that got the oil drippings on it and just clean the blades. Being mindful not to bend them or misshape them, because this is very thin aluminum. Let's clean them front to back. Okay. And let's go ahead and put this back on here. Lock washer. And our nut. And I don't think I'll be able to get the rotor to hold still, but we'll see if this works regardless. All right, so it does get tight on there, which is good. Got a little bit of bend there. Trying to see where the bend is. I'm putting my thumb there to indicate where the bend is. Every time there's a bend, it strikes my thumb. Like that. This needs to get bent forward just a hair. Try it again. Now these two blades are a little bit back. And that again. And that again. Bend these out. Back to one strike. Bend that out. Ah, my nut shot off. So obviously it wasn't tight enough. But we got the balance problem solved. So we definitely need to grab a hold of that shaft. So let me get some hemostats here and hold this back nut while I tighten the front nut. Assuming it'll let me do that. All right, that's pretty tight. And if we want to go a step further, we can plug it in here and 
see how well it behaves itself. Assuming I can get a good connection. There we go. Nice quiet motor. That'll be good for putting back in the uh, heater. So let me get the fan remounted and then we'll take off the front grill and clean inside of there. Alrighty, we've got our fan back in here and mounted. So this will be ready to use. Now let's get the grill off the front and clean the inside there so there's no nasty dust burnies. And to do that, there's screws on the corners to undo and same on the top there, uh, which normally aren't accessible when the machine's together. So let's get it apart, clean it out. All right, so here it is with the front grill off. And because I don't want to break any of those wires back there, uh, I'm going to use my soft brush to clean behind the wires because I don't want to break any of these. These are very fragile. We're just going to clear the dust and stuff off. Anything to break those would be a bad thing. That would pretty much put the kibosh on this. And then we'll use a shop towel with some Windex to clean the bottom half here and we should be good to go okay there everything is all cleaned up so now we'll start reassembling this and we'll give it a brief test and then we'll get to replacing the cord okay everything's back in here and back together we're going to do a brief test to see if everything works on it and then if it does we'll replace the cord all right, let's see if she works. Got power. Fan comes on. Got a little bit of a rattle there. That's going to bug me, but she's getting hot. Let's crank it up. Oh yeah. I think it's crazy hot. No nasty burning dust smell. The uh, buzzing fan definitely bothers me a little bit. I'm not sure how I can combat that. Because I don't think it's the fan itself rattling. I think it's something else in this enclosure. But it works quite well. Now the problem here is, is that in the time that I have run that, let me unplug it, this where my hand is, is crazy hot. Yeah, this is really hot right here. Uh, likewise, if we go up a little bit more, up into this section of the cord right here, this is also screamingly hot, like this is going to melt hot. So this cord's no good. And I'm going to change it out to a three wire uh, so that we can ground it to the case and make it a little bit more safer to use. And the toughest part really is going to be finding a, a strain relief that works. I may have to drill that hole out, but that's kind of where we're at right now. But the heater itself works quite well. Okie dokie. So I got my new appliance cord here that's rated for 16 amps. And that's going into the switch box assembly. I've got my unit grounded there at the chassis with a lock nut. So this thing's ready to go back together and we'll do one final test. All right, all back together. 
Let's see, did I screw something up? Oh, the neon light stopped working for some reason. That sucks, I like that. Let's crank it up a bit. Man, this thing works well. Nice clean heat. Very cool. Now eventually I'll go back in and replace that neon. But it's good to know that it's working well and it's ready for the winter. And let me get the plug out the wall. And as to be expected, the big heavy-duty appliance cord is not even above room temperature, so this will be safe to operate. I just wanted to make sure because I don't want a house fire. So this thing is ready for prime time. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. More stuff to come.